You guys ready to do some science magic? Yeah! Okay, so there are five different magic tricks I'm gonna show you today that are the five signs of chemical change. So what letter is that on there? A G. Okay, and then I have these tablets of Alka-Seltzer. And so I already put one in here and I'll put the second one in. What the? <laughs> the balloon popped up! Yeah! Oh, but look, 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 it's building up. What the? What is it doing? Wow. Is that pretty cool? That's yeah. so cool. What does G stand for? Gas. All right, so this chemical reaction, we had a liquid, Whoa. the water, and the solid Alka-Seltzer, and when they react with each other, they fizz and they bubble and they form carbon dioxide that's gas. Right. Wow. Wow, that's cool. It's pretty fun, right? When we add heat to a liquid, eventually the liquid particles are gonna speed up and spread out fast enough. They're gonna jump into a gas in the air. Uh -huh. But this is not considered uh -huh. a chemical reaction because we're just adding heat. There's only one chemical in here. There's only uh, H2O there's molecules. One chemical. Yes, one chemical. Yeah, one chemical. So <laughs> when the molecules speed up, they spread out and then they turn into gas vapor. If I put a lid on this, so here you can see the steam rising up again, but when it's more sealed off, as the steam hits the glass at the top, it starts to condense back into water and then drip back down. And so steam is just water. There's no chemical reaction happening here because it's water molecules and faster moving mo water molecules that hit this and become cooler moving water molecules over and over and over again. This on the other hand was two different chemicals, the Alka-Seltzer and the water, that we mixed together. And when they did, the atoms started rearranging and recombining to form a gas and then the liquids that are left here. So chemical reaction, new substance, not a chemical reaction, same substance, just moving faster. And if I remove the heat from it, stops. then it stops and all of that liquid just condenses right back in there. Yeah. yeah. What's the next letter that we have? What's that letter, Bo? Do um, uh, rainbow. Okay. Macy, what color is it? Rainbow. Okay. So what do you think C might stand for? Chemicals. Okay. So here I have some cornstarch. What color is the cornstarch? White. White. Watch what happens when I put in the water. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. What happened? Is that super surprising what, that white cornstarch made the water turn white? Yeah. It it's, looks like milk. It's pretty expected, right? No big deal. All right. Okay. So now I have iodine. And iodine, if I put it on my hand, is like this kind of orange Ooh. substance like that, okay? And so if I put this like orange yellow into this water, what would we expect to happen? Probably a turn a yellow. Probably turn like yellow, right? Or maybe yellow in there. it will turn, turn rainbow like this. Maybe it'll turn rainbow like that. All right, are you ready to see what happens? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Bo. How about you take Whoa. the spoon and start up? Whoa, it's like crawling up the side. Oh, it's so purple! Oh my goodness, was that expected? Yeah. No. No, you didn't think that was gonna be purple, right? Bo, you went with one crazy color. What does C stand for? It stands for color. Color change. So when we mixed the yellow iodine and the white cornstarch and got purple, this is a sign that a chemical reaction has occurred because this is an unexpected color change. But if I just put green food dye in green water, Bowen, what's probably gonna happen? Um, maybe turn rainbow like this? We'll see, go ahead and put it in. Green and water turning green is not a chemical reaction because it's just mixing up colors. So the next letter is what, Mace? H. All right, and based on how it's written, what do you think we might see happen with the next set of chemicals? Heat. Okay, good guess. And maybe so, rainbow? Maybe rainbows, we'll see. 
Okay, so Bowen, can you tell me what is the temperature of that candle right now? Um, 89. We'll turn it around so we can see it. All right, 68 degrees. Whoa, 103. Holy bananas, right? And one thing that can happen during a chemical reaction is that when the chemicals start to rearrange with each other, that it can get hotter, or release heat. But can you t check the temperature of this water? Uh, 65. Okay, and then can you tell me the temperature of these little bead things? 68. 32. I was right. Heat. Heat. Very good. So while the instant ice pack, which is an endothermic reaction that absorbs heat and feels cool, and the matches, which is a combustion reaction, which is exothermic, which releases heat and feels hot, are heat change reactions because it involves two chemicals with atoms rearranging, releasing heat or absorbing heat as they go. This, just turning on, oop, turning on a burner. It's turning on a burner. Right? And adding heat to a substance like water. This is not a chemical reaction. I'm just adding heat. I'm adding energy. And when you add energy to something, uh, as you can see in the heat video, um, it just causes the particles to speed up and spread out. So this is not a chemical reaction. These are chemical reactions because there are two room temperature things that just became hot or absorbed heat where released heat or absorbed heat Whereas these ones, this, we're just putting extra heat in. Hey, Bo, what letter is that? Um, O. Very good. All right, so based on how it's written, what do you think O might stand for? Oxygen. What do you think, Bo? Um, eagle. E you are? No, eagle. Eagle? O for eagle? Oh my goodness. Smell this. What's it smell like? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. So some chemical reactions, cause an odor change. And when we smell something very, very different than we did before, then we know that the atoms are rearranging and we have different chemicals. A lemon smelling like a lemon is not a chemical reaction. It's just the acetic acid in the lemon smelling and having its own property of an odor. But when an apple goes from smelling like an apple to smelling like rotten, gross apple, that is an odor change and a sign of a chemical reaction. Anytime food rots, we get a chemical reaction. Typically, we'll have some gases formed, the color starts to change, um, it starts to get a pretty nasty odor. What is our final letter? P. 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 The final magic trick involves a clear liquid and another clear liquid. And when I put the two clear liquids together, bloop, 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 not only do we get a color change, but you can also see that they form chunks. And so a precipitate or a precipitate, depending on who says it, means that we're getting a solid formed when we put two liquids together. A precipitate is not taking a solid and dumping it into a liquid. Some chemical reactions have more than one sign at a time. For example, when we digest our food, it comes out um, sometimes with a little bit of gas that wasn't there before, a different color, a different temperature. It usually smells different and precipitates can be formed because, for example, babies have a liquid diet, but they still make solid poop. When our food goes bad, it usually starts out one color and the first sign is that it turns to another color as it oxidizes in the air. But it usually also has a different odor, which is a sign to us that that's not the same chemical that was there before. Now, you can keep a lookout for chemical reactions happening all around you by looking out for gas, color change, heat change, odor change, and precipitate formation.